All right, here we go. Marty Bain and Gotti. Happy to have y'all on the platform, man. Good to be yeah. here. First of all, I want to uh, give a shout out to Man Brockenbaum. We just lost him two days ago. Real live OG, innocent, full war for life. Rest in peace, big bro. Yeah, man. And uh, for people that don't know, um, y'all both are a part of Fatal Camp. Absolutely. If you look at the interview from Tupac and Shug, the Death Row East interview, um, y'all both in that interview. Front line. That was the job. That was the job. Made sure Pac was good all night. That was yeah. the job. Yeah, man, and um, especially you, if you look at the interview, you yeah. right there on the right side of Tupac. Yeah, he was on the left. And uh, But Fatal told me that night, wherever Pac go, I got to be there. All night. You know what I'm like, a lot of, and you got to understand, like, we in a big park. It was free alcohol. Like, niggas was running around. I couldn't even run around with niggas. <laughs> I had to be with Pac the whole night. You know what I mean? Niggas running around drinking, smoking, having a great time. But uh, I was, I had, I had uh, I sit there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, man. So a few weeks ago, man, Nas and his brother Jungle, they did an interview with Ebro from Hot 97, and they was detailing the incident between Tupac and Nas in New York at Bryant Park. And y'all had issues with that interview, right? Absolutely. Yeah, because they was lying. They was lying. And the, the, the bad part about it is Nas know Jungle lying. That's why Nas wasn't really, he wasn't really saying too much. It was Jungle just fabricating. You know what I'm saying? He could have kept it on it. It ended peacefully. So why make it seem like it was something other than yeah, it was? Yeah. That didn't make sense. So before we get into the Tupac and Nas incident that took place in New York at Bryant Park, let the people know a little bit about y'all relationship with Fatal. I came up under Fatal. Fatal was my big bro. Uh, he caught me fresh out of, uh, I know him my whole life, of course, he's a, he's a face of the hood. Like, he's like a, a triple threat, my nigga. He's a rat, he beat niggas up, and the bitches loved him. You know what I'm saying? So he, he was the face. So uh, when I came out from prison, juvenile prison, I was down Jamesburg. I was coming down the street with my man, Mike Parker. Uh, we seen Fatal and she like, oh, it was Fatal. I was happy to see the nigga. No, God damn it. That ain't my <laughs> I was with Mike Parker, and uh, somebody came up to us and said, Fatal looking for you. And I looked at Pete like, what the fuck are you looking for me for? I ain't do nothing. So then we seen Fatal two days later. Mike was like, yo, take a Fatal. I was scared to death. Like, God damn. Like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? But he came up to me and was like, uh, yo, I heard you was wilding down Jamesburg. And I'm just being humble. Like, oh, that's nothing, man. That's nothing. I was like, man, fuck that. Come down on New and get this money. That's what happened. So what about you? Same same type of shit. We all from the same area, you know. I've been down the way a little longer. You know what I mean? But Fatal was like the big bro of the hood. You know what I'm saying? Fatal a little older than us. You know what I mean? He been running around before us. So you know how that shit go. You know, we just following footsteps. Right, right. Yeah, man. So the incident that happened in New York between Tupac and Nas. Just give me a detailed account of everything that took place that whole entire day. First of all, you got to start by saying what happened before that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Fiddle came to the hood. Like, yo, they have, uh, they have the MTV Awards. Niggas come up there deep. I'm talking about it was so deep. My cousin Dirty Bird that's sitting right here, he tried to get on the damn deep camp with a shotgun in his damn pants. I said, we going to jail. Nigga, what the fuck is you doing? We, they filled up a whole deep camp. My man Squid Dollars got off uh, New Jersey Transit from Caldwell Jail. Fresh out of jail. And jump right on the jump right on the D camp. Boom. Whoa. So we filled up a D camp, got other niggas in cars to meet Pac at the hotel. You know what I'm saying? So it's like deep is a, a understatement. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We was uh, like an army. <laughs> it was the whole Essex County. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you had, you had niggas from East Orange. You had niggas from Orange. You had niggas from uh, what living from um, Renner. Uh, Renner. Like. It's a couple of niggas from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Hey, everybody we deal with. Hey, everybody yeah. that we mess with, rock with, whatever, whether you from Montclair or not, we always together. You know what I'm saying? We had dad from Little City. See, rest in peace, peace, dad. dad. big bro. And how many people was it? Because um, I seen a, I heard an interview from Fatal, and he mm. said it was like 150 of y'all. Maybe more. It was a lot. It was wow. a lot. And he said, um, Fatal, he said in the interview that at least five of y'all had guns with y'all, right? I Way definitely had that. mine on me. Way more than that. Way more? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Way more than that. On the bus and everything. Everybody. 
Okay, and um, just take me through that, man. Y'all going to the MTV Awards, everything prior to the incident. How was it? Well, we got to New York and uh, we got to the hotel. I don't remember what hotel it was. Remember Millennium we Broadway, Millennium. Where? Yeah, so we there. Across the street from Central Park. Facts. So the niggas from the streets took over the uh, outlaws room. Flooded that room. So Fatal come upstairs and said, uh, we about to go that we about to go to the MTV Awards. You know what I'm saying? It's too many of you niggas. You can't come. Do what y'all wanna do. You know what I'm saying? See, so you know what these niggas do. They ordering all type of Christian. I wasn't even there yet. I ain't there yet. I got there late. By the time I got there, that shit was already flooding with bottles of crystal. Everything, everything. Niggas everything. ordering all types of bro. caviar. I don't even know what the fuck <laughs> caviar is. Niggas was wild and cheeseburgers. Yeah, shit was crazy. So uh Phil takes me downstairs to park room, park laying in the bed. I look in there and shit. I see the rest of the guy that's in there, Smith and Wesson, no one's in there. So when Pac finally gets up, he comes out of the bedroom like, Fatal Dog, New Jersey. Happy as hell as him. Went back in the room, came out with the jury box. This is how you know Jungle Lion. Because he gave Fatal the Rolex and the Death Row chain. Pac ain't had a Death Row chain on. Fatal had it on. Yeah, I heard about that. I heard you know what I'm um, when Tupac was in New York, he was giving away his jury to Fatal and the Outlaws and stuff. <laughs> I don't know what that. I'm going to tell you uh, about Fatal with the jury box. Fatal Dog, New Jersey. That like that, you know what I'm saying? So um when Pac come out and give him the jewelry or whatever, uh Fiddle like uh tell Pac, this is my man Bang I was telling you about. You know what I'm saying? So Pac was, yo, you wanna drink, you wanna smoke? And I'm like, nah, I don't do that. So Fiddle like I told you. I told you. So then uh we better go to the ward, we go to Snoop room. Snoop you know, he's doing a little bullshit, getting his hair fucking um curled up. Pump. Yeah, that was fucking Bump of iron shit. Yeah, he had like the perm. Yeah, 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 shit like this. Shit, yeah. the temple type shit. He got this dumb ass shit going like this. So I'm sitting, I'm mad as hell. Like, what the fuck? We gotta say, wait for this shit. So then I was bumped. Now I gotta put that dumb ass hat on and they gotta bump it again. I'm looking at this like, yo, yeah, like, we gotta say, wait for this nigga. I'm going through the show, we wait for this nigga. We go to the awards. Like I said, like, sure, roll with Snoop. We in the limos. He rolled with Snoop. It was me, Pac, and the Outlaws. You know what I'm saying? The ones who was there. You know what I'm saying? And, um, we get to the awards, pause, before we even go to the awards, these bitches come to the limo. So Pac like, who you want? Those, uh, they said, we, you know, I don't think they was from out of the country because they couldn't even say who's saying right. They're like, we want Hoosin. We want Hoosin. <laughs> so Pac like, get out the car, nigga. So Fatal jump out the limo and shit. So you know how he does he, he start talking because he got the jewelry on. So Pac, you know, so Pac like, look at this nigga, like, you know what I'm saying? He's showing off, like, boom, boom, boom. He was doing this thing, you know what I'm saying? Got back in the car, so Pac tells Fatal, he had the bandana on, he said, sit by the window, so everybody think you me, you know what I'm saying? Get to the awards, pull up, you know how the lights be, go inside, <clears throat> while we sitting there, you know, you got LL, his wife behind us, you got Michelle A, sure, we all in the row, so I'm just sitting there. So now it's time for uh, Pac to give out the award. We get up, go around, can't go all the way in the back, so we stood there. And I'm like, yo, those Nas peoples. So we're just waiting for Pac to come out. So when Pac come out, somewhere, somehow, one of the niggas accidentally bumped into Pac. So Pac was like, yo, motherfucker, when you see me, you get on the other side. So the nigga was like, ah, right, my fault, Pac, my fault. And back, then, back to his boys, and then it was like, fuck you, Pac. That's when everything exploded in the side. So now I'm running, I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, let's get busy. Like, I'm looking at, I'm looking at Fatal, like, what's up? I wasn't looking at Pac, I'm looking at Fatal. You give me the word, I'm popping their ass. I ain't thinking about that shit. So everybody arguing, but once Big Shield came walking down, you know, plus the security, you know what I'm saying? Right. Big Shield came walking down, shit got, you know what I mean, deceased, like everybody. Not, I don't even want to say he deceased, like he's just, everybody broke off. You know what I'm saying? So we go, uh, we walk through the little thing, whatever the fuck that shit is in the um, awards, talk to um, Eric B. Eric B start talking about Death Row East, you know what I'm saying? Boom, 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 boom. So Pac like, all right, we out. So we jump in the limo, go back to the hotel. Now, remember, Pac ain't see all these niggas. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we pull up to the hotel. These niggas was outside. Like, Pac like, damn, Fado, I told you to bring niggas, but what the fuck? <laughs> he said, yo, we, now we have to go to the after party because we wasn't really going to go. Like, you know what I'm saying? people don't know. We wasn't even planning on going there. You know what I'm saying? But once it was so many niggas, now we got to go. So we get out the limo. We have one with the bellhop. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the dude, some dude said this some funny shit. White dude, bellhop dude was talking crazy. The pop, pop was like, man, I had these niggas strip you butt ass yeah, niggas yeah, out yeah. here. You got think, man. you got think. We, I'm, I was nineteen at the time. That was ninety six. You feel me? I'm nineteen. We outside with Pac, Shug, Snoop, and all of them. You know, niggas ready to do whatever. Niggas know they got bail money. Niggas <laughs> like, yo, it's going down. You feel me? So, you know what I mean, luckily ain't nothing transpired. But we was off to the hotel that night. After that, we was walking down the street. Pop was throwing hundred dollar bills. Snoop was lying because Snoop was on some scared shit, but we ain't know that because he was him and him and Pop and Dre was going through whatever they was going through. So he was standing by. Us, I'm sure, big ass bottle of Moet. My man Rodib kept trying to take the shit from him. He wasn't get to him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying he threw that. He gave that shit to some fan. Then we went that's a, to that's a park. Nah, when we was walking to the park. That's before we was getting in the park. He was doing that shit. Mm -hmm. After that, we got in the park. Everybody was doing their thing. You know, you got entertainers, athletes, whatever, singers, and a bunch of young kids wilding. You know what I'm saying? We happy just to be pop, pocket sugar and all of them. So, you know, everybody doing what they doing. The nigga seen Nas. <laughs> that bellhop said, that bellhop said, uh, Yeah, what was he, what did he say to Tupac? I know exactly what he said. Uh, he wasn't even talking to Pop. He was talking to Shug. Oh, okay. He said, Shug, where the party at? So, Pac said, we don't know. Shug, where the party at? Pac said, we don't know. He said again, Suge, where the party is? Then I fucking tell you we don't know. I ain't talking to you, I'm talking to Suge. That's when everything just went haywire. Right, right. there in front. Who the fuck you think you're talking to? Shit like that. There you go. But um, at the park, you can see that wherever Pac went, I was there. My, so, my job was to stand by him at all times. So before we get into the incident that happened at Bryant Park, yeah. out of curiosity, who provided y'all with the Death Row East shirts and the um, Death Row East signs. As soon as we came out the hotel, because yeah. we ain't had them shits on when we got there. Know. They came I out there. I think it came out, I think, I think it was in the van. It was in the van. All those shits was in the van. van. They was passing yeah. them out. And yeah. I don't know what Ebro got. Niggas was getting paid. Paid, yeah, paid yeah, to wear them Death Row shirts. Ebro don't know what the fuck he talking that about. That was all yeah, Jersey. In interview, yeah, niggas said he was getting paid. But then. Nah, yeah. That was Jersey. Shit get a little deeper than man. Now that now that now that I understand or whatever Nas part was saying about who was part of Death Row East, it don't even really make sense, right? Like if he's saying Supreme, we all know who Supreme is. So Nas is a little dude from Queens at that time. Supreme was somebody, so I don't think he was coming there with no problems anyway. Especially knowing that Supreme had something to do with Death Row East. It just don't make sense. You know what I mean? You're right. So So we get to Brian Park, right? Y'all got about 150 people or more. Mm -hmm. How many people was with Nas? I give him about six. Nah, that's more than that. I give him about six, seven. It was, it was all right. Give him about six, seven. It was all right. It was all right. I heard an interview from Fatal. He said that um, Nas only had like three people. I'm telling you, I had like six niggas with him, bro. And the only nigga who I seen reaching was the nigga L.E.S., light skinned nigga with the Kelly Fro. When niggas surrounded him, he definitely grabbed his hip. I don't know if he's pump faking, but he grabbed it. <laughs> yeah, man. So, um, do y'all remember Nas' brother Jungle being there or no? I'm gonna tell you. Yeah, he was dead. Oh, I'm gonna tell you what happened after okay. after you see that interview with uh, with me and him and Pac, and you believe in God, believe in death for weeks. Right, right. But after the interview, we walking through the park, and it just so happened Nas' song was playing. Okay. So Pac was like, welcome, what's that? Welcome, welcome to the sun, free yeah, your bitch. And the hit he was coming. And we coming. So once we met in the middle, you know what I'm saying? You know, everybody from Jersey like, uh -huh! And it just so happened, I slid around. And then Jungle said, get that nigga from behind my brother. I ain't going nowhere. I had, you got Dav, you got God, you got Barry. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is ready. Like, niggas is ready. Like, it was too many of us, truthfully. They know that. Like, they know that. You know what I'm saying? Nas brought a jungle. He yeah. did the interview with Ebro, and he told a story about how he um talked about a situation that happened before the incident that happened in Bryan Park with Tupac and Nas. He said that um earlier, before that happened, he made a comment. He was with his girl, and he made a comment around, you know, some members of Death Row, and he said that um Mob Deep, I'm going to take a Death Row chain. That's false. I was there. That didn't. That didn't happen, at all. Why? Like, how could he say that? Who had a death row chain on besides Fatal? You know what I'm saying? What happened was, I'm gonna tell you what happened. That one of them, one of them niggas ended up bumping into Pac on accident. Pac spazzed out to a nigga. Get on the other side when you see me, nigga. And everybody jumped up. Like, we was deep, deep. And at this time, we're not 100 or 200 deep. 
it's only the rappers, me, Pop, and then Suge came running. The security. The security, facts. You know what I'm saying? So that definitely didn't happen. Just take me through the interview, the Death Row East interview. Because you was right next to him, right? Mm-hmm. Right there. That was in the park. I was right there too. Yeah. So how did that come about and how was that environment like when Tupac was going on that rant about Death Row East? He wasn't really ranting. He, he just was, was telling yeah. them what it is. Yeah. He wasn't really, it wasn't no beef. He was just giving niggas people to drop. Like, this is what we doing. This is how we going to do it. We did it over there in the West. We over in the East with it now, doing it over here. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't it was like it was a, uh, like a planned skit. Like, we, we mobbing. It just, paparazzi came out of nowhere. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He like, oh, no, nah, it wasn't that. Believe in death row. <laughs> Believe in death row East. That's all it was. Right. So... The incident at Bryant Park, um, Snoop, he did an interview with um, Arian Foster, and he said that um, Nas, he had like 100 people with guns. Mm -hmm. First of all, Snoop was, wasn't even next to us no. when that happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, he bugging. He knew damn well it wasn't like that. So Snoop was nowhere around? No. Not when, um, not, not when, when I, they, they no. had the little altercation. Snoop no. wasn't there. Last wasn't time there. I seen Snoop when we was walking down there, he was passing out the money yeah. in the bottle. And I seen Snoop again when we jumped in the vans to leave. Yeah. So you telling me when Tupac and Nas had the Snoop incident wasn't there. He wasn't there. at Ryan Park, he wasn't there. Nas was nowhere. To, I, mean, I mean, Snoop was nowhere no, to be found. Nowhere. Wow. You see, old boy said he was lying too. What's the nigga, the, uh, Reggie, Reggie security guard nigga yeah, said he was lying too. Right? Yeah, Reggie know that way he wasn't there. And Snoop, he also said in this same interview that the hundred people that you know was there from Nas crew, he said that they um started circling around Tupac, and Tupac didn't notice. He's lying. I don't know where that was. At. How you see that? And he wasn't there. Yeah, facts. Yeah, good, good, good point. How you see good that? Point. He wasn't there. That didn't um, happen. That shit happened right, right, right after the little interview. Probably like right after that couple minutes after that that's couple when all minutes. that shit happened you know what i'm saying we finished walking with that mm -hmm. that's when they say nah as everybody start walking to each other so and, it, and it's not like we was in that park for hours <laughs> right we went in the park for hours uh, no. Where's, um, I mean, so wasn't long we did we walked in did the interview bumped in the knife so snoop was he looking at least from a distance or he I just was him. nowhere i ain't see him he wasn't around that circle he, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't close enough to hear us uh, uh, nah if it, put it like this, if he was uh, close enough, he'd have seen nothing but uh, Death Row East uh, white tees. Right, right. So, um, Tupac and Nas, out of curiosity, do y'all know what they was talking about or no? Only thing I know, Pac said, the before I moved around, Pac said, uh, I got some, my album coming out, some things on there that you ain't gonna like. I told you, uh, wait, so I told you I had nothing to do with you, it was about big. That's the only thing I heard. So, Nas, what was his energy like when um, Tupac was talking to him? Did he seem nervous or? Nah, they was regular. Truthfully, they, they uh, to me, I think they handled it like men. Because at, at any given time, if somebody did the wrong thing, it, 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 it got bad in there. But they handled it like men. He said what he said. He said what he said. They shook hands, hug. They spent off. Spent off. And um, Fatal, he said in an interview that... um. You know his crew, the people that he brought to, you know Brian Parker, whatever. He said they they was like yelling all in Nas' face. Facts. And Tupac had a yell tell to or be, tell him to be nah, like tell niggas to chill. Down. Yeah, tell niggas to chill. Tell me about that. What was y'all saying? Because then? once we seen him, we yeah. thinking it's go it's go time. So niggas niggas is looking for Pac to say one word. They're like, what up? Like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's excited. Everybody want to put that work in. Pac a grown ass man. We was we was young. Teenagers. They was teenagers. We want we want to ride. You know what I'm saying? But him and I spoke. And it ended, it ended well. Fatal, he did an interview, man, and um, he told a story about how, you know, Tupac was actually responsible for a whole lot of New York entertainers being able to go home that night. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that. What he's saying is like, it could have got bad. If Pac wanted it to get bad, it could have got bad. You know what I'm saying? For a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Just, just imagine you got a bunch of wild young boys gripped up. You got Nas and his people, they probably had grips. They could have got real funky in that park. You know what I'm saying? Bad. So, all right, girl. There wasn't no police around either. Yeah, like, like, like. There was no police. Oh, there was no police around? No, we in a big ass park. Yeah. Ain't nobody around. We're superstars. They ain't thinking nothing going <laughs> on with that. 
So Tupac actually didn't want it to go there. He didn't want nobody to get hurt or whatever. No, nah, like I said, he was telling everybody to calm down. He didn't tell anybody to calm down. They had, they, had, they had a conversation, which was good. It was needed. You know what I'm saying? Because it was all grown man shit. Yeah. End of the day. You feel me? Except for us. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we, was, we wasn't on no grown man shit. We were trying to do something at that time. Yeah, y'all was trying to get it popping, huh? Yeah, we was uh, we 19 years old. We were two parts of cool. Yeah, you, the fuck? Simon was there. You got <laughs> Eric B there. Rock, I mean, MC Hammer was in the background. <laughs> yeah. Like, let's be clear. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot going on that night. <laughs> and we young, running around with a bunch of superstars. So what you think, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So the aftermath. Mm -hmm. After everything took place at um Bryan Park between Tupac and Oz, Give me a detailed account of everything that happened after that incident. Once we uh, once they talked, they shook hands, hug, it was squashed. We walking out. So uh, on the way out, Pac was like, uh, "I'm a millionaire." No, no, no. Somebody in the um, now they got the little barricade. The little barricade is right there. So uh, somebody was like, "Pac, you gotta love. You don't love New York." Pac was like, "I love New York. I'm from New York." He said, I'm a millionaire and Biggie broke and threw the money to yeah, the people. The money out there. You know what I'm saying? To the people. And then it was a bum. He gave a bum the money. Like, yo, go, go sleep in the hotel tonight. You know what I'm saying? So now he asked the security, all right, like, where the, uh, where, where, uh, where the limos and um, trucks at? He's like, all right, they ain't here in two minutes. We out. I ain't here. He ain't wait the whole two minutes. Well, it's about like 30 seconds. We start walking back to the time. We, we mobbing down the, uh, down the street. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking a whole, just imagine you see a Bunch of niggas just coming. White definitely shows. White definitely shows. We walked about four blocks before they finally came and picked us up. No bullshit. So if, if niggas wanted to do something, we walking down the street. Like, right. What the fuck niggas talking about? Like, dang. I don't know. Um, did Tupac make any comments about Nas after the incident? Not that I know of. I think I think that conversation they had squashed everything. Truthfully. Is it true that um, Nas and Tupac was supposed to meet in Vegas? I don't know about that. I don't know. What about, um, you know, Tupac telling Suge Knight that he was going to take Nas' diss off of, um, against all odds? I don't know about that yeah. either. That was above our pay rate right there. <laughs> you feel me? So after the incident that happened at Bryant Park, mm -hmm. a few days later, you know, the Tupac incident happened in Vegas. Yeah. So... Why wasn't Fatal in Vegas? And what was y'all reaction when y'all heard the news that Tupac got shot in Vegas? <laughs> uh, Fatal stayed in Jersey with us. How long? How, how, how far apart was it? Yeah, so he always had a court date. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, matter of fact, after New York and what in Vegas? How many days ago was that apart? Like, shot like two days ago. Yeah, two days two after, after that, that shit. Yeah, so he didn't get a chance to go back. Pac got shot, and he was crushed. Him and Gaddafi, crushed. Gaddafi came back. Right, so take me through that, man. Y'all getting the news that Tupac got shot in Vegas. Before it was announced that he passed away, just the, you know, the news that, you know, he got shot. Everybody was crushed, everybody. But ain't nobody really think he's gonna die. Like, we like, he Gucci, like, he, he, gonna, he gonna bounce out of that. But when they, when they uh, announced it, Ugly. It was bad. Like the whole hoods got black. Like it was bad. What was the fatal reaction? Yeah. It was crushed, yeah, man. They life changed. Good. You feel me? Your life about to change. Now that shit over with. Mm -hmm. Shit, our life was about to change. And I ain't shit. I ain't like rap like rapping my life. You know what I mean? I'm part of the street team. It's about to get down though. You feel mm -hmm. me? This shit about to get robbed. Yeah, man. And um so Fatal wasn't in Vegas because he had a court date. Yeah. And um, I remember an interview from Fatal, and he, t you know, he said that um, if he was in Vegas with Tupac, Tupac would have never gotten that fight with Orlando Anderson. How y'all feel about him saying that? Um, I don't really got nothing to say about that, cause I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't doubt it though. I wouldn't doubt it. I wouldn't doubt it. Do y'all think if Fatal was in Vegas with Tupac, that would have happened? Though. He always said that. Oh, for real? He always said that. Fido Fido was a rider, you know what I'm saying? He wasn't no rapper. Right, right. That's why that's what people get in the fuck up. A lot of people be rappers. He was from the concrete, so. 
So I want to talk about a rumor, man. Um, Fatal. Mm-hmm. What was Tupac and Fatal relationship like before Tupac passed away? Because it is a rumor out there. I don't know if it's true or not, but it is a rumor that, you know, Fatal got kicked out the Outlaws and false. He crashed Tupac car. But he, he crashed the car. Yeah, he definitely rainbow. crashed the car. Definitely crashed the car. What? Him getting kicked out is definitely false. If he'd have been kicked, if he's gonna get kicked out, why would Pac give him the Defo chain and Rolex? Y'all yeah, heard these rumors before, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I, okay, it's coming to mind now. I think the rumor was Fatal crashed Tupac car and Tupac sent him home and kicked mm-hmm. him out the outlaws. That's not nah, true. How you get the chain? Yeah, that, that, that don't, don't even make sense. Okay, like, like like okay, let's say he did send him back. He had to go to court anyway. <laughs> right. Saying? And Pac knew Fatal was a street. Pac told Fatal to bring us there. Okay, if if these people bought these people, these people why is I the only non-rapper there? Because yeah, I was I fatal man. Yeah, you I'm, right. fatal, I'm fatal man. So why I, I'm the only one there? But yeah, that's a good point, man. Um, if Tupac and Fatal was beefing, you know, he did, you know, a few days before the Vegas incident, you know, he had all the people. He, I mean, he asked Fatal to get a whole lot of people from Jersey to be at Bryan Park in New mm-hmm. York at the MTV Awards. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. You know what I mean? You guys, sometimes people just gotta use common sense. You dig what I'm saying? Like, shit don't make sense. Sometimes people just go with garbage because they love garbage. Like, at the end of the day, he just gave this man over $80,000 worth of jewelry. He gave him a presidential Rolex that had diamonds in every link. Like. That same shit, that's on all eyes <laughs> on me, brother. Oh, yeah, for real? yeah, the, the same the chain, That's what I'm saying. Like, Jungle said he was going to snatch a chain. Pac ain't even had that chain on. Every night. Pac got that chain that with the, the damn big ass circle. The with, Black Jesus who was shooting AK. Yeah. Yeah. Euthanasia. Yeah, so out of curiosity, man, um, do y'all know the um plan Tupac had for Fatal? That Fatal and Gaddafi was gonna be a group called Fatal and Felony. The outlaws can go back to drama cycle. All right, Marty Bain and Gotti, man. Great interview, man. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks appreciate for being part of your platform. Yeah. Yeah, man, um, great interview, man. Um, I appreciate y'all coming on the platform, man, and telling the real story. All facts. Gotta get out there, right? Yeah, man. And um, what's the better know, place to do it than here? Right. Yeah. True, man. And um, mm-hmm. a whole lot of people been looking at that Death Row East interview for years, and they was always wondering who was the other people that was in the clip. You know, especially you, because you was right there on mm-hmm. the right side of Tupac, pretty much meme looking, man. So you know, <laughs> everybody was, was always a, asking about you, man. So. It was all new street niggas in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Great interview, man. Um, I appreciate it, man. So before we end the interview, man, just let the people know what y'all got going on. Right now, I got um, NS Entertainment with Dirty Burt. You can catch our music on SoundCloud. We got a mixtape out called uh, Never Settle for Nothing, Volume 1. You can catch me on Instagram at n.s.n underscore 93. I got um, NSN uh, apparel um, team that were um, IE clothing. And um, that's it for me. I got Stack It Out with Mafia Entertainment, Montclair Parking. Shout out Shabby Shan, you know, boss over there. Shout out the rest of everybody that ain't here that was in them videos. Call me Quinn Rod Dib, Barry, everybody that was there. My boy Lynn. General. Rest up, Levon. Levon ain't here no more. Oh, rest in peace, Levon. Rest in peace, Dash. They ain't there. Dash. CYO Clothing, CYO Records, Trigger Trife is banging. And you can catch me at Gato underscore SDM. Facts. I want to shout out my artist, uh, Kasim. You can catch him at uh, um, Instagram, I am Kasim. My other artist, MD. Catch him on the uh, Instagram, Moneybag Drizzle. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can shout out the Rose Song, CYO artist. You know what I'm saying? My boy. Just the engineer. <laughs> and engineer, facts. Man. My boy. That is it for me. Oh. Shout out to Chaos, my, uh, my technician, <laughs> uh, CIO, 